my name is Nicole Evans and I am the Curator of Exhibitions and Collections at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. Today we're going to do a focus on the collection. The focus for this collection are two works of art by Willem Volkers. These two works of art are essential pieces to our collection. They round out not only who we are as an institution, who we are as a community, and what is important to us as a museum. Willem Volkers has been an artist in Montana for many years. In fact, his very first exhibition in Montana was here at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. And that is why we have some pieces from the early 80s, including this house. The purpose behind Art Objects Lab, focus on Willem Volkers, is to really look at the importance of caring for a museum's permanent collection. This particular exhibit is really meant to highlight care efforts that have gone into the works of art by Willem Volkers with the help of the artist himself. Willem took the time early this spring in 2024 to come and take a look at work that needed attention because some of these pieces had needed replacement in their transformers. They needed neon replacements that have been broken for over 20 years and had not been on exhibit in the museum during that entire time. It's important to understand that a museum not only needs to highlight, showcase, and show the artwork during exhibitions, but is also responsible for caring for the works of art for the existence of the institution. So in perpetuity, it is a core responsibility of the museum and one that we take very seriously. The museum loves its art, and so does the community of Great Falls. And we know how important it is to take care of the art in our collection, just as important it is to highlight the artist and to communicate all the information through education. Let me show you this over here. Here you see William Volker's Vincent's Hats. These works have not been on exhibit since the 90s. And these pieces are essential to our collection, just as the smokehouse is as well. What we see here is that Willem took the time to really look inside the cases, to look at the transformer and to make sure that all of the neon was functioning properly. And you'll see that as well as he discusses how the neon works and what's going on with the colors. They've added fluorescent powders to the inside of the tube. If you didn't use fluorescent powders, if you put these gases in clear glass tubes, you'd get a straight blue, or in this case, in this neon gas, a, 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 a real red. So this is neon gas right here, right next to an argon, it's neon and argon. With this yellow tube, what happens is that when they heat it up to bend the tube, some of the fluorescent powder on the inside of the tube burns away and you get these kind of whitish kind of spots. Like here's an example right here. See that's a little wider in here. And so I've actually switched to a yellow glass that glows yellow all the time. So this is a yellow that's made from a blue gas and the reason that I don't like it is that some of the powder on the inside of the tube burns away while they're bending it. Another thing I point out is that it's yellow and green are in the same tube <clears throat> because they use the same gas. So you can actually splice them together. But you could not splice the neon and the argon together because then you'd get a whole different kind of color scheme going. It's very important for the museum to focus on different types of works of art. And these particular works that have um, electronic elements or chemical elements like neon take care. You know, we have to really focus and make sure that the pieces are being shown properly, taken care of correctly, and um, show value to our community what it means that we have these works of art. So when Willem came to visit, he really took his time and effort to look at everything, making sure that everything was working properly, and making sure that this collection of his work will stay in our collection in a wonderful condition. In addition to this, preparing notes for us on how to maintain these works when he is no longer able to come and help us. This project is all part of a larger project, 
And one of the exhibitions and projects that unifies these concepts was object number, an exhibition and project on collections care and the information about what museums do place in 2023. But before that, the, the museum initiated a plan of action through various discussions at the leadership level with the curatorial staff was to really take aim and focus at the collections care efforts within the institution. So this is part of a larger ongoing project that really aims to fix, repair, and give attention to creating sustainable forms of caretaking for the artwork in the institution. The most important part of this is making sure that all the community should understand that the museums provide an opportunity to build a healthy community. The art that we hold not only is an object, because that's what we're doing, is we're taking care of an object, but it holds a greater significance in terms of the history of art within our community. So when we see and take care of a single object, we are taking care of history, we're taking care of stories, and we're taking care of the future of our community in Montana. We are building a larger understanding of what it means to be Montanan, of what it means to depict and illustrate the history of ourselves through art objects. And that is why it was a gift to have Willem Volkers give of his time and efforts since the onset of object number in 2022 when the Collections Assessment Preservation Award was gifted to the institution to take aim and focus at its collection. There is no arguing that all museums experience great joy in the creation of the museum collection, but it is also accompanied by the burden of sustainability. Collecting is a fruitful yet harried task. It is a commitment to collect art, care for it, properly package and store art in calibrated envir environments, and the biggest responsibility yet, bear witness to its future existence and protection. If we do not bring to light needs, how will we have those needs met? Once there is a better understanding of the collection and the need to care for it, funding will happen. It will happen through conscientious grant writing, donor and community relationships, and a desire to maintain historical art educational material. Collections and the care of those collections will then be championed.